My name is Rhapsody and welcome back to Vault of the Void. At the top of this episode, I would like to say that there has been a dev update that you all might be interested in. In particular, Vault of the Void is going to be released into early access this Friday, November the 20th. Uh, you can find the link to the Steam store page so that you can wishlist it and or if it's past that date, purchase the game in the description down below. I'll uh, also remind uh, as we get closer to that day, or particularly on that day, but for the moment, it's time to jump into Impossible for our first run. Now, uh, it's Blade that I haven't done in the longest time with the Hidden, right? Yeah, we had Blade, Bleed, so we go back to Blade now. Let's do it. Wait, hang on. We're on our third cycle, aren't we? Yeah, so we started on Blade. We're back to Blade. I'm almost certain. It's fine. It'll all even out eventually. Let's jump in. Oh, what is this? Gusher, gain X volatile hidden blades equal to your current energy. Upgrades to gain an energy also costs you an energy to play. So, you know, it's just X equal to your current, right? Uh, Duck and Weave. This is just a giant block card for one energy. I'm always pretty happy to see this one. Something extra. All Swift Attacks Blade will also deal to bleed. Swift. All the volatile hidden blades are swift. There's also sustenance over here for some extra bleed and some from shadow. I would not be surprised to turn this into a full bleed deck. <laughs> uh, okay, well, quickness makes a lot of sense here, but so does Dueling Buckler. Dueling Buckler just being it's so good in a combo stacking deck. And then if we're using Volatile Hidden Blades, we can probably go for like a balanced deck. That is to say a deck that does not consume its combo. It just stacks combo and then runs. I like it. I like it a lot. Okay, you're the first two cards played trigger twice, right? No, the first card played each turn costs two less. First two cards will trigger plus one times. So it's a star council there. Uh, each time you purge a card, block three, and when you have a, sorry, uh, during the void fight, start with overcharge one and increase your max energy by one. Sorry, at the start of each turn, gain overcharge one. Let's go for it. 300 essence or five souls. Uh, how early is, okay, so the minimum cost here is six. That's always the case. So we're probably going to want 30 by there. Um, gosh. This is interesting. There is a lot of variation on this map. I think the only thing that I do know is I don't want the 500 souls because I'm not going to be going to this early on. Okay, well, at least that simplifies this choice for us, right? Gain those five souls. We also get a void stone, specifically the yellow void stone. I'm already going to make some substitutions in the deck. I'm taking parry out and I'm putting uh, from shadow in. I'm also going to take a single slash out and put a gusher in. Take a parry out and put a duck and weave in. Uh, another parry removes for a sustenance. Another parry for a dueling buckler. And then we have to decide ultimately whether or not we want the something extra in the deck. Uh, I don't know if I want it yet. But I do want it in general. Hmm. I could probably cut a slash and do it. Okay, fine. And then we have the yellow void stone. So I'm probably going to want something that is a swift attack to be holding that yellow void stone. I may end up just looking for a hidden blade and hold it until the point that I can get a hidden blade to put that into. That is to say a non-volatile hidden blade, the one that goes in the base deck. Apprentice's blade, combo one, gain two temporary hidden blades. Okay, so that has to be on our path. Something extra, second copy of it. There's a thousand bleeds, a uh, thousand cuts rather here with uh, a block in it as well. Apply, mm, battle cry, apply too weak and too slow to all creatures. That can be particularly impactful here as well. Uh, bleed it out, enough, light it up, anemia. Mithril blades, all hidden blades trigger plus one. There's Jab, it's a swift attack that draws cards, so we can actually use that to refuel. That's also probably something we'll want to pop on the path. Uh, obviously, Dueling Buckler. Crimson Slaughter seems like it'll be pretty good later. All creases with bleeds suffer vulnerable to, and then trigger all their bleed stacks. Mithril Blades obviously wants to be on the path as well. Okay, so how do I hit the majority of these, as well as trying to get as much value out of my other spaces as possible? It looks like we ignore this Cursed item because any attempt to go downwards immediately moves out of that something extra. But at the same rate, it's entirely possible I ignore that something extra and take the battle cry as well as this, because 
we're going to have a lot of difficulty actually weakening and slowing enemies. And this gives us apply too weak and too slow to war creatures. It's a dramatic decrease in the amount of damage we would take in some fights. Okay, so if we were to do that, what would the following path be? It would be something like... Uh, hmm. Don't love this. Okay, so there's Dark Mine here, capable of duplicating one of our cards. By that point, I will probably... Oh, no, I'm not going to have upgraded Gusher. Oh, you have a hidden... Okay, never mind. Quickness in Hidden Blade. We actually had to go down here anyway. Oh, that's really annoying. So the really annoying thing here is I'm not going to have the resources by the time I get to the duping area to uh, up like dupe an upgraded Gusher or some such. So it's possible we don't even go to the dupe. If we don't even go to the dupe, what are we doing? We're going like... Duh, duh, duh. I mean, I have to go for that Hidden Blade or something, though. So I guess I visit the dupe and I do nothing there. I don't like that, but okay. And then if I ignore, if, I, if I'm if i going up from here, I'm cutting off both of these paths. So that means I am locked into this. Let's anemia light it up, miss out on those. That's totally fine. Then we jump back around down here. Dueling buckler, honestly, it, I'm going to put the soul collector on the same path because it's possible I end up going to the soul collector instead. Uh, and then that would be, you know, go. Because if I go to the soul collector, I'm ignoring... Well, no, no, if I go to the Soul Collector, I'm ignoring the Dueling Buckler, right? And then we go down and across, because I'm definitely going to this Elite. Um, if nothing else, I just want the Relic. I also might decide not to go for a second Mithril Blades, because at the moment, like, something extra, we're going to have one base. <sighs> are we going to have one base in the deck, or are we going to get two? One base in the deck. Don't worry about that yet. All hidden blades trigger two extra times. Base hidden blade in the deck. Crumbs. You know what I could do? Literally just dupe a hidden blade. Right? It's not going to be upgraded, so it'll still be inert. But eventually, with the two uh, mithril blades that are over here, we can have a relatively high cost deck because the both of those are going to eventually be upgraded to be three cost. And then we can have zero cost hidden blades cycling through that just already trigger plus two times plus two times again so they're triggering five times without any combo and i have the yellow void stone already so i can just start throwing yellow void stones into them black we can throw a a, a blue void stone in rather later on get the ability to sit through the entire deck okay so we're just not defining bleed necessarily at the moment as our win strat that's all we're doing okay i'm comfortable going Eight minutes in before we make our first uh, first selection here. I look. I think every second I spend in that pre-planning phase, every single one of those seconds saves me like a couple minutes of headache later on. Um, we, we've already got our kind of like laid out plan here, and I really appreciate the fact that you can see the rewards, so you can kind of map around them. It makes this part so. Uh, so there's, there's so many decisions that I get to make. They get to have such an influence over the run. All right, let's run in. Before I start gushing too much. Okay. Uh, so I can take down a target right now. Maybe the throat cutter, preventing the damage from the next turn. Totally fine with that. One, two, hit this. Oh! I'll go Void Enchantress as well, actually, there. Now, there's only one enemy on the field. <laughs> and it's almost impossible for me not to draw lethal this time. Got him. It's our perfect fight. Get that battle cry. If you start your energy with three turns or less, add a volatile sidestep to your hand. So that's another zero cost. If nothing else. Um, having a look at the map again. Uh, okay, so I can't move this, so I can't actually see my own marked map, and this map doesn't show my markings. I'm pretty sure the shrine is along the path that I've elected to take here. So I'm going to take the item. Yeah. 
Yeah, it is. It's on the path. Good. So the reason I wanted to know if this is on the path is because the Dark Visitor is probably going to charge me a single void as well. So that means that I can go here to the shrine, remove two weakness cards from the deck and be happy with it. Let's move to this quickness. I'm going to need to find some upgrades for these quicknesses as well. We're going to have energy problems pretty soon. We don't have them yet, but uh, they're coming. Trust me, they're coming. Hmm. Oh, wow. It double hit the right target as well. Good sustenance is there. The reason I did that is because sidestep... I did it because sidestep... Yay. And now it works. We go sidestep. Let's get rid of the underhanded. I am going to start with a... Slash... Purge, parry, sidestep. Hit a quickness. Hmm, I did that all wrong, didn't I? Yeah, I did. That's my bad. I need a good draw now. <sighs> I mean, I should be able to generate defense with this. Start with that slash, purge the something extra, get the hidden blade. Let's use sidestep, quickness into dueling buckler. You get to take one target down and duck and weave. Actually, there's 10 incoming damage, right? It's possible we don't kill next turn, I guess. We'll leave the duck and weave in hand. Okay. Let's get Gushy and Murder. Nice. Very happy to have the quickness. So it's the Hidden Blade was on the path. Yes. I don't want to throw any of these in until I have the Hidden Blade. Uh, we'll we'll think about the battle cry as we approach each of these fights, just in case there's like a huge damage enemy. Uh, okay, the battle cry on here would just reduce like three damage a turn. It's not huge. I don't want to play the something extra here because these enemies get uh, one frenzy the first time it suffers a debuff in any turn. So if I put bleed on them, I'm just going to be taking a bunch of damage. Also looks like I don't have the ability to kill any of them this turn. Okay. So then I'm going to open with slash, quickness, throw a dueling buckler and then purge the rest of the hand. Save the dueling buckler that I want to use next turn. Okay, so we can start out with the dueling buckler. Kill a single target and then parry. Do I really want to do it like that? This target's healing 25% of their max HP. It's not huge. I could try and split it here. So 25% of your max HP is uh, a quarter of it. 25 means 12 means 6. Round up means 7, right? So you heal up to 18, which puts you in the range of, honestly, just having to locate a bunch of attacks on you. I don't like that. Especially because you already have the Frenzy. I want to take you off the board. Now everyone else has Frenzy. What did I just do? <laughs> Um, I wonder if I actually just throw both attacks here. Yeah. I want the volatile sidestep in the next hand. Which makes it pretty easy to decide what to do there. Okay, volatile sidestep and duck and weave already has this turn on lock. Slash, purge the rest of the hand, try and get energy. Or do I want to take the quickness? 
I want the quickness. Well, no, 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 because I'll play a slash before the gusher next. No, but I don't have to play a slash before the gusher next. Time. Do I even want the gusher next time? Hmm. Also, not going to use the spell yet. Seven. Get the heal for seven. I'm going to start with the Slash, purge the other one, and then Gusher. Okay. One down. And then I... I mean, you're attacking, so I'll hit the other one, who is not going to parry me immediately with it. We take three damage, and then it's just these two remaining on the board. That could be a lot worse. I probably just play sidestep as well as the duck and weave here. Sidestep, duck and weave, dropping a, I guess, defend because we're going really aggressive here at the end, ideally at least. Ow. A lot more damage than I wanted to take. Kill that leftmost target. And then purge, purge, purge. Sidestep defense. Purge. One target by itself that can't get buffed much more is uh, not going to be too hard to deal with, ideally, here. Stop attack. <laughs> mm -hmm. Perfect. All right, we're out of the fight. Only took us nine damage. It could be a lot worse. That's our hidden blade. Go to the next area. Hang on. I'm going to see if this works. Okay, cool. We're not in the mimes area yet. I'm going to quickly go to the deck manager and do the thing that I really wanted to do, which is put the yellow void stone into the hidden blade before we dupe it, and then we just have to find upgrades for each of those. Okay. You go here. You choose a card. You choose a hidden blade. You get to play with the uh, one void. Perfect. Yes, it wasn't upgraded yet, but this this is how we go with this. Bruce, okay, you can't be made vulnerable. Is there anything about the deck that I want to change as a result of that? I'm going to put both those hidden blades in there instead of two slashes, though. Um, and I kind of want to cut something for the, the quickness. In fact, I'm going to cut something extra here for the quickness, just because the like Bruce is not going to respond well to that. Bruce heals from bleed. When 10 cards are played, deal 10 damage to all enemies seems really, really good when I intend on creating a bunch of free cards and then just playing those. Hmm. Maybe that wasn't the best turn. I mean, we got some good defense at least. Okay, let's duck and weave. Unfortunately, don't get to drop anything because we actually already got both of the negatives drawn out of the deck. Then I will purge a slash. Use double quickness to start setting up our hidden blade value. Got a bunch more hidden blades left in the deck at this point. Speaking of. That's a lot of weakness, actually. We'll probably do that at the end of this turn. Yeah. Set up four stacks of weakness here. I'm gonna turn that down. Okay. 
Okay, throw out the Gusher as well. It is very much death by a thousand cuts at the moment, but it seems like it's fine. Maybe I really did want to have something extra here to be bleeding the enemies. I want to leave the duck and weave in hand for the next turn. Decently large block when the enemy is doing decently large damage. Okay. Duck and weave past a void. Damn. This this fight is not going well at all for us. As much as I want to weaken the enemy again, do I have I have to? Six damage block next turn. I'm gonna leave sustenance in hand as well. Repeating block should we need it. Enemy's not attacking next turn. Okay, I'm going to throw the parry and attack again then. So we've got two turns to go ham here to try and finish out the fight. Easily discard the void from shadow to... We get a sidestep in the next hand as well. It's possible we end up playing five cards next turn, I guess. Oh, thank heck. Found our damage. Got a hidden blade out of that. We'll go visit this merchant with... Bite is pretty good. Yeah. Just a large block that gives us combo. It's exactly the kind of piece that this deck wants. We're also probably going to throw that health potion into the fight soon. Corrupted Ogre constantly regenerates and can inflict dazes before attacking. Okay, this one I'm going to cut a slash, pop in a something extra, cut a another slash, get an apprentice's blade. Um, goods. Okay. And I think I'll also throw the health potion in here. Combo one, gain two temporary hidden blades, upgrades to three. Okay. Slash into combo one. Just keep hitting them. Maybe 24 damage on the slash. Incoming is 16 next turn. Fine. I've done it like that so that I can guarantee that I get the sidestep this turn as well. Oh, that's perfect. Let's get rid of that. And that's then sidestep, bide, and quickness. And we're on full combo for any of the hidden blades we should have to draw. Oh, look, we drew hidden blades. Isn't that good? Not only that, but we managed to full block as well. God, once we upgrade these hidden blades... <gasps> oh. They're going to be so much defense. It's like a dueling buckler and damage. <laughs> it's everything you could want. Uh, Well, I mean, that's 20 damage as well as a significant reduction in the incoming damage. So I'm pretty happy to take that one. Uh, Probably not going to hold dueling buckler though. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Can I kill this turn? Uh, 
Not whilst trying to defend. Gusher into quickness. Wait, hang on. Four. So, so it's four apiece with these. Plus another gets us 24 total. Uh, and then with the something extra, we would have the ability to start trying to push for damage. But I want to play sustenance twice here. I've got next turn to kill. And I've got a reasonable deck for it as well. Oh, also the, the final trigger on the Torch of Triumph actually hit. So yeah, I could have used the spell and killed there on that turn. Oops. So here's our upgrade point. Has to go into Hidden Blade. Both of them have to go into Hidden Blade. They're kind of like the first ones earmarked. Okay, that's Jab. Just making sure there was no awful decision I made around this point in time. Nope, cool. Jinx Leprechaun and the Red Cap. Any modification I want to make to the deck for the sake of these enemies? That Battle Cry has a little bit of an appeal, but it is pretty little. Ooh. Okay. That's a large amount of quickness to gain on turn one. Let's the duck and weave. Gush her out there and double quickness. Every four cards you play in a turn, suffer poison four. Oops. Well, we just suffered a lot of poison. However, when we play our next card, that midliner dies soon. Kind of okay with it. Okay, then I'm going to use a Apprentice's Blade here. I'm also holding this Binding Hand, just guaranteeing that I already have the ability to defend. Two to discard. I really just want to get those two slashes out of there, but I know that one of them is the kill this turn. Okay. And it's just... That was block 12 while it did that. Oh, it's so good. This fight is very close to over. It's just going to take a moment to get there. Got No other modifications I want to make to the deck at the moment. Ghostly Piranha. At the start. Okay, well. So at the start of this fight, we're already going to be generating 10 damage to all enemies. So... We've got to be prepared, I think, here. Yeah. I think we want to try and take out a Ghostly Piranha this turn if it's available. Okay. There's one point of combo. So what? This would be... Four, six, so four, six, six. Six is filled with 16. Plus underhanded tactics, four... 7 by 2, 14, 16, 14. So I can kill a single target this turn. Right? But that would also increase the frenzy even other. What if I tried to pepper down two targets on the same turn? Like hidden blade one, hidden blade the other, hidden blade the other, and then underhanded tactics back on the first. Maybe not even using underhanded tactics. That was an awful idea. That was a really bad idea. I shouldn't have done that. Yep, 
be vulnerable as well. Okay, yeah. Uh, dueling Buckler plus Bind gets us to a good position here, thankfully. I have the ability to instantly kill a target on the board if I desperately wanted to. Um... I want to keep them all around the same health value and then just kill one. Keeping my combo again. That's probably wrong. Yeah, look, they're all basically back to where they were before we started the fight. Except you're, you now have Frenzy. Oh, gosh. Like, we've got a Hidden Blade and a Gusher in here. Like, we've got a good draw coming up. It's just not this one. God, I'm not even going to have much defense in the next hand. Ow. Ow. So much vulnerable. Why? Okay. And also, the Hidden Blade back on the bottom of the deck again. Rude. Seven incoming now. No one's healing, so I am going to be getting some kills next turn at least. Finally. A kill! One of my very own! And having now killed two of them, none of them are going to respawn, so what? We took five damage over the course of this fight? What's all my belly aching about taking five damage? That's, that seems fine. Um, by the Hidden Blade. Finally, we get to remove these two voids. That is going to make the deck run so much smoother. Uh, we actually can't do a huge amount with the Soul Ride there, the Soul Collector yet. Another dueling buckler really does work well with this deck, so sure. Gonna opt out of that. Your infection construct. Um we're fine here, right? Got another slash from Mithril Blades. I could take jab instead of I mean I should take jab instead of a normal slash, I think. So I'm starting to want the, the something extra or the Mithril Blades at the very top of the deck. Mm. <laughs> uh, I really want one of them rigged at least. I don't know which yet, so I am going to pass. I'm going to leave Duck and Weave in hand. And let's gush for a bit. Festus happening over on the left will increase its max HP by 10. Yeah. Don't really affect me either way, frankly. I get a Vols or a, a sidestep in the hand, which defends me for six if I use this duck and weave. Sure. Um, let's get past that slash. Use a sidestep to increment the Torch of Triumph. We're getting pretty close to a kill now. Right, these are, yeah, 60% per, so we should try and set the left and then kill the rights. Um, that bite is perfect right now. Come on! Wait, we played Gusher earlier, right? Yeah, we did. It was in the first hand. 
There's something extra. Hmm. If I purge the parry and play something extra, we're already hard defended for this turn. I can use Jab for a bunch of draw and then go Swiftness and uh, Apprentice's Blade to get almost all the way back up. It's not bad. I'm also pretty likely to play enough cards this turn to trigger the Torch of Triumph and kill the left. Okay, Purge, Purge. Play something extra and a Quickness. Right? Start attacking this target. So yeah, we're not gonna get him. Not gonna get two in the same turn. I'm, I'm trying to start working that into my playstyle uh, more because I feel like ultimately that's where I do need to go. Um, I'm just not necessarily great at utilizing it yet. I think it's a fair point well made. Um, yeah, they all get stronger when I draw out these infections, but maybe I hold that bite in hand. No. Okay, we got enough defense with this hand already, but let's start with Prentice Blade, he's from Shadow, and the parry for the full defend. Go to Slash, and then we just target, target, target. One more down. Oh, this is perfect. This is a, this is a great demonstration of exactly what this deck does. Hidden Blade. Block me a bunch. Do it again. One more time. Ah, uh, just... Just a little bit more damage for the road. There's our kill. <laughs> yeah! There's our dueling buckler. Uh, alright. Depends on the elite, I think, here. Corpse will only get stronger every single turn. Um, it's, it's possible I do need a battle cry in this deck. So I'll cut a slash for it. Ooh, that Dueling Buckler, I'll probably cut a base parry for that as well. I need the unintended, uh, sorry, underhanded tactics out of the deck as well, because that and the jab are currently the only swift consumptions in the deck. And if I can remove those, I can start removing more of the sources of uh, swift growth and then just rely on things like the Bide and the Apprentice's Blade in order to give us all of the combo that we need. Because if I can then get to that point, life becomes a whole lot easier for us. Right, we have so much more space in our deck to work with. And honestly, like, almost all of that could be supplemented with defense instead. And I'd feel pretty good. Uh, potions, we have no potions to throw in this fight. Okay, so we'll just run in. Holy effigy, lower all negative conditions by one for each leftover energy at the end of the turn. We are going to be leaving a lot of leftover energy at the end of a lot of turns. Because we're playing a lot of zero cost cards. And also we, uh, well, we don't want to leave huge amounts of leftover energy consistently because we do want to get the sidesteps. Hmm. The thing is, Holy Effigy is so strong against certain enemies. Like the, the Pyre Hive absolutely wrecks my shop every single time I encounter it. However, if I am Holy Effigy, every time I purge a card, not only am I gaining energy that allows me to remove more burning, but also I'm removing burning by the act of purging, right? So the, the Holy Effigy becomes super, super effective against them. Um, as for the downsides that really, really kind of kill this deck, uh, none immediately jump to mind. Band of Power, obviously, is just more damage, right? We will be playing a lot of attack cards, so it's a lot of damage for us. I think I'm going to take it for that reason. I think I'm going to take and regret it for that reason, I mean. Void Beast at the start of the turn, gain 2 AP, inflicts 2 dazes, dazes right at the top of the deck, so we got to know that next turn we're not really going to be drawing damage. Uh, sustenance, sustenance, throw. Quickness throw. Just trying to get as much into the Torch of Triumph as possible. Yeah, 28 incoming damage. Don't like this at all. Um, I'm probably going to play something extra and the Mithril Blades here. Hold on to the Bide for the next turn. 
We're not really going to be defending a huge amount next turn unless we draw a dueling buckler. <laughs> nice. There's two dueling bucklers. <laughs> I don't even need both of them. Wow. Um, yeah. Purge that one too. Nice. That was double days against the top of the deck. Uh, I might even hold on to this. Yeah, onto this uh, Hidden Blades because it looks like it's the majority of the defense that I'm able to generate next turn. Use Battle Cry, Purge, Hold. Fractal Feather is exactly the card that we want for this deck because then every time I play a card named Hidden Blade after the first, I gain three block. Which uh, I need not tell you is uh, something that looks like uh, might be valuable here. Okay. One giant hidden blade for Corpse Beast. Mm -hmm. Great. I was trying to set up the jab the entire time. Now we get bide, purge, purge, purge. Get a quickness out there and then we can just start going again. No incoming damage this turn makes it super, super easy for us. Hold a dueling buckler for the next turn. Actually, that seems like a good play unless I had the ability to full defend. I don't. Second buckler? Dang. Yeah, enemy's suddenly dealing some damage, eh? Oof. Best I can do. Take the 19 that turn. Hopefully we have lethal. That's not lethal, but it might be enough defense. Damn, the cold piece gets serious. How dare you? You die now. All Mithril Blades will trigger plus one times. I need more Mithril Blade sources in deck before... I, well, Hidden Blade sources, I mean, in deck before we really capitalize on that. We go there, cross up. That's our pathing. Okay. That fight's kind of shaken my confidence. Void more a single creature fight where the beast gets stronger as you purge cards. That's completely fine. We don't have to purge that many cards here. Um, get weakens. Hmm. I actually do have to purge some cards this time. One, two, three. Should have played the sidestep there as well. Okay, there we go. We got our bide. Got a quickness out of here for the Mithril Blades. from shadow as well it's time to start attacking no we do only have hidden blades it's fine we'll get them soon enough owie how dare you damn me with all those damn points Don't want to purge that. If I purge it, the enemy gets the extra AP this turn. I'm holding this in hand effectively just as like a finisher that we have on lock. Yep, 
The enemy's not attacking this turn, unfortunately, which means that I don't really want to throw the underhanded tactics. Coach Duck and Weave, play Gusha. One damage. And we got it. Nice kill. It ultimately became a perfect fight. Come on. Upgrade points. One upgrade points? That's more than none upgrade points. I'll take it. Uh, I'll take something extra just in case that's how we really want to pivot in the future. That bide becoming 22 block is really appealing. So are both of the dueling buckler upgrades. Um... Apprentice's Blade is pretty appealing as well, because between that and Bide, we can just, like, you know, cut all of the, the combo. Mm. It's the Dueling Buckler. It's 15 block for zero energy. It's the Dueling Buckler. And then it's the other Dueling Buckler as well. Uh, okay, it's the king. Is there any modification I need to make this deck for the sake of the king? No, you can bleed skeletons in this game. Popping this yellow void stone in the jab seems interesting to me. Because if I am ever going to be using a bunch of combo to be on that. I mean, obviously the, the hidden blade could one of them could hold that. Blue void stone. Dueling buckler is inert, so you only ever get the one benefit from whatever jam is in it. But I don't need multiple triggers of the blue void stone. Sometimes I just need to get past the other defense in my hand that I don't want to play after I played a dueling buckler that already full defends me. Um... Is something extra even what I am? Right, this, this deck has bleed in it, but the bleed is now incidental. I think I'm a Mithril Blades deck. I'm actually cutting that and I'm putting another Mithril Blades in. Sixteen incoming next turn. Push the underhanded tactics. Get as much combo out as I possibly can here early. I'm gonna even purge that gusher. We're gonna wait for the next cycle before we play those. Need those two against the main line. Play the extra defend just for cycling. Generate and play again. Leave this hidden blade in hand for the next turn. These are defends. They are defends that come with some damage attached to them. It's a potent defense, so I will hold it in hand still here. Against the 36 incoming turn. Oh, double Mithril Blade. Look at all that. And again, then jab for a bunch of card draw. I'm gonna purge all of those, get a bite out, and then save this hidden blade for the next turn. Now I've got a dealing buckle for the next turn. I want the damage. Yeah. So we can already see how ridiculous this can get. Uh, sidestep into Dwelling Buclier. Um, leave another one in hands. Yeah, this can get pretty ridiculous pretty quickly. And we haven't even upgraded the Mithril Blades yet. It's definitely going to be part of what we do. Uh, Perch. Feels like we're probably going for lethal this turn, but maybe I'm wrong. I should play as though we aren't, just in case. Mm. 
Yeah, yeah we were. Oh, two upgrade points. It's, 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 it's almost always the two upgrade points for me. That might just be because uh, as a player, I've been encountering this in every deck builder I've ever played. And I think Teak put it actually best. Sometimes, you know, <laughs> sometimes you don't really see your patterns until other people point them out to you. And uh, though I've had obviously a comment section to point out my own patterns to me, this is, this is a particularly, uh, particularly well-worded one. And that is that in games like this, Slay the Spire, Monster Train, deck builders, right? I understand this game builds itself as quotation marks, a deck builder, quotation mark, end. Um, but I, I'm, I'm lumping them all in in the way that I tend to interact with them. And that is I build engines. That's what I do. I want to see this go off in this way and I will compromise the deck in any way to get it to happen. Uh... And eventually, as I get better at the game, I start understanding what engines work and what engines don't, and then I start adapting from there, right? I've described it before as I break a game, and then I work backwards to figure out how I can replicate those kinds of results. And I've been finding that in this game as well. So it's entirely possible that my overvalue, like, I, or rather, that I am overvaluing two upgrade points, but I find it real difficult not to take them, like, almost every single time. Uh, Apprentice's Blur stays in the deck 100% of the time. Let's upgrade that. Both these Mithril Blades. I want the Battlecry actually gets the too slow. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play the, the, the defensive upgrades there. Building Steam. Whenever you play a Swift card, inflict two damage for a random creature. Upgrades to be three damage for a random creature. That's minimal compared to just like two extra hits on the Mithril Blade, right? And I don't want to have my whole deck be buffs. Unload. Power Strike enough. Furious Assault. Deal six damage. Deal an additional four for each attack played this turn. Also, I could probably double that with a band of power relatively regularly. So basically, uh, what? I, I, on some turns, I play like eight attacks. And then this becomes deal an additional four by eight. Four by eight is 32 on top of six, 38. Wow. It's actually not that far from being outpaced by just generating more blades so furious assault actually looks really good here but i don't think it it has the stats to back that up there's another bide here which i'm interested in oh that's a jab with block already on it that's really appealing backpedal quickness killing block. okay actually the cards here kind of uh are not what i need Okay, how do I best do this? I can avoid that Furious Assault and then ride around this corner. Uh... So here are the mutual exclusives, right? I cannot get the Elite, the Cursed Item, and the Treasure here. I have to turn one of them down. There's no path that gets all three. Uh, like, go up, down, I've already turned off that elite, go down, I've already turned off that cursed item, like, it's just not happening. So, what I really want here is the path that also then allows me to get the majority of these mob upgrades. And that would be going across. Uh, it'd be going across, across, there to the cursed item, up, no, I can't do that, wait. No, no, that's, that's fine, that's fine. Right? I'm never getting all three of these mob rooms anyway. That's not possible. So if I go, duh, 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 that's already cut off. Duh, duh, duh. I can go just straight down and get the extra two. Um, after that, because I'm going to be like all caked up on resources, let's go to the disheveled salesman. And then that mob room joins it to the soul collector. So 100% will be taking that path. We're definitely going down to try and hit this elite as well. Probably going for another upgrade after it. Um, then merchant treasure, another upgrade on the way out, leave. Looks like our path. None of those that I really... Wait! I up... Hmm, did I upgrade one of the Mithril Blades yet? No, I didn't. Got an Apprentice of Blade there. Battlecry is actually not a bad card to have rigged on. Played at the start of every cycle. It's really not bad. It's really, really not bad to the point of being good, even. 
It's good, actually. Let's go for the unload over here. Flash base, rotting gut fiend, as well as the exalted warrior. Um, I mean, the way that my deck is structured at the moment and the focus that my deck has makes it really, really hard to change much of how we play. My also, uh, my huge investment that I've already made into the way the deck currently runs uh, similarly makes that hard to play. Love that giant slow weak. We just had to go there. Um, uh, Mithril Blades also. Yeah, that sidestep. Creature can never gain fury as it's a uh, passive. Do I really need to be leaving both of these in hand? How much more defense is there in the deck? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight in a total of 15. Okay, yeah, I'm fine. Let's, let's double attack there. I was wasting too many resources to hold. Obviously, I wanted to hold them until after I had the, the combo up as well, but... <laughs> wow, uh, this sucks. Oh, what a bad turn. Okay. So, wait, play the jab. Yeah, play the jab, play sidestep. Then we can use Gusha, getting a bunch of these back out. We've got four incoming damage next turn. I just want to play as many cards as possible there for the, uh, the AOE, the Torch of Triumph, that is. Yikes. Uh, okay. Nah. Ow. Ow, 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 This is not going to be good. Uh, we need Bide and Dueling Buckler to be drawn into this hand. Game, you're not supposed to give me everything I asked for. That's not allowed. That's going to make people think I'm cheating. Well, if it helps, <laughs> we're going to need a similar thing this turn. Uh, and didn't get it. Okay, that makes sense. Whew. Um, let's approach those two. I mean, I'm playing all the rest of this hand already, right? Mounts of Flesh. Mounts of Flesh on that side as well. Okay. I mean, the next card I play deals damage to everyone. It's just... Yeah. So we taking 10 this turn? Mm-hmm. Those two sustenance for the bleed. Yes. We throw all into hidden. Jab for all the draw. I mean, play one more card, two more card, pass turn. Great. We've set up the Torch of Triumph for the start of this combat. Taxidermist on Holy Creation. The Bane's gonna be become a problem, but I don't really have a way to counter that right now. I could put an Unload in the deck, give me a second Sift. But only one Sift isn't really gonna help me counter this as much as just trying to attack faster. Yes. It's possible I don't even battle cry here. In fact, it's quite likely, I would say. Want as much draw as possible. Okay. Pass these two. Use a Apprentice's Blade as well as Quickness. We're going to be using that jab for as much draw as we can get out of it here. There's some Mithril Blades as well as Bide. I feel like I need both. I really want the 
Mithril Blades played. It's also good for those two Hidden Blades left in the deck. How many sources of combo are there left in there? Literally just one if I do that, though. Actually, I'm going to purge the quickness, keep that, and then keep the bite in hand. We'll find other ways to play that. Should have played the sidestep there as well. My bad. Keep it getting two. Fifteen damage incoming. Um, yeah, I have no problem generating this and play it in this turn. Nice fifteen damage right there. You really got me. I'm trembling. Yeah, I'm actually going to pop that from Shadow there. Just get the kill already. Don't need to let that Taximness try and get another turn after this. Yeah, now that we have a, paint, uh, a Bane in hand that we can't remove, these enemies are starting to actually propose a threat. Could have been a lot worse. Uh, that's an item versus enough. I I'm saving my money for the disheveled salesman over here. Okay, we're going cursed item. Huh. So I know from my off-camera experience what this does. I I kind of want to leave it to be a surprise on camera, but I don't think I want it right now. So I think I'm going to destroy this item. Fury's Assault. We actually don't even want that on the path for the sake of the card. No, it's it's literally just for the sake of the relic. There are so many relics here that would really, really rocket us out. Oh my god, Dolus. Oh, don't like that at all, even slightly. I'm getting a something extra in this deck. Uh, I already have, like, basically the highest cost cards in the deck that I possibly can get. I'm going to need to just throw this, this uh, purple void stone on something. Guess I'm going to throw it on Bide. The Gusher, I'm holding out on putting a red Void Stone into it because I want to give it a black Void Stone. Duping that Gusher is ridiculously good. In fact, it might be the only good dupe in the deck. So I'm very, very happy to wait for that. Uh, Dulles. Every third card you purge increases your energy by two instead of one. Every eighth ability card will be played that uh, costs zero energy, so... That's a backpack. Zero energy, zero energy occasionally. Zero energy occasionally, zero energy occasionally. I mean, it saves us a reasonable amount of money. Energy. Um, the closer this deck gets to my ideal, the less we're going to want Pickle Tant. During the upkeep phase, this creature will randomize its AP. When a card is added to your hand, its energy cost is randomized between 0 and 3. Oh, okay. It did actually change this hand. I didn't notice because quickness sometimes does cost 0. And obviously, bide still costs what bide costs. I mean, quickness battle cry is easy there. And then just hard purge the rest of the hand, I guess. I want to play Bite next turn. Okay. Bite our way into Mithril Apprentice. Yeah, this is what I was worried about. The, uh, the blades themselves are going to have weird costs.
They're my only win strat, though, so I still have to do it. Kind of over a barrel here. Okay. There's some defense. I can double try and do sustainance here. Come on. Hey! Got a low cost sustainance on the next one. I know it's sustenance, don't worry. Um, hit a Volta Ghost for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Too high cost, so it just destroys it at the end of the turn. <laughs> Uh, okay, good. We've actually got hidden blades here that are going to help protect us now. Alright. Something extra. I really don't want that. 18. Why? Actually, hang on. I just purged the rest of my hand. Nice. Okay, Dolus could have been way worse, but even with all of our cards having those weird costs, like our zero cost spam deck was fine. So I feel like we have some resilience in here already and I'm feeling pretty comforted by that. Um, do I want the From Dos for this fight? So soil damage to target creature if it kills the creature, heal five HP. Start trying to heal myself back up a little. It's just the ghost blades are so synergistic with everything I'm doing. Uh, did I make any additions or subtractions to that deck before the fight? No, I didn't. Okay, cool. Uh, I mean, this battle cry is super obvious. One, two, three, four, five. Six. Decent setup. I'd like the mithril blades upgraded now. But I have difficulty generating the energy that would give me the ability to actually play them when they're upgraded as well. So, uh, don't know, don't know. One, two. Purge one quickness. Hmm. Uh, I mean, it's obviously the, the From Shadow. We can play something extra into more damage. I just have to hold that Dueling Buckler in hand. Balance decks are really, really good. They're super powerful. Choose two cards you want to discard. Sure, buy it and Dueling Buckler. I only have to play three more cards this turn. We get the Vulture in the front line dead. I mean, I don't want my hand just to be dealing Buckler sustenance up next. Eh. It's fine. It's fine. There's our battle cry again. You're hiding. Any evasive of two. Wait. This creature will sacrifice... Sorry, kill itself. All other creatures gain frenzy plus one. Wow. I can't even stop you from doing that. Oh, that sucks. Oh, that's wild. This is going to be really bad. Oh no, oh no, oh no, 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 no. Well, at least everyone's slowed too right now. We've got about one more turn of uh, of this battlefield not being the worst thing ever. And then it's time to lose. So let's try and get out ahead of that if we can. Hard purge that hand as well. Three down. Are we fine, actually?
We are, aren't we? Blade. Blade. Give him a wee bit of a jab. Then, Francis Blade. Quickness. Give him a little bit of a jab. Nice. Okay, okay. It was, it was doing better than I thought. There's another upgrade point for us. How do I justify not just going for jab, though? These quicknesses do... Sorry, not jab. Jab. Uh, I meant dueling buckler. It's just they were in similar positions. So I was looking over the two pages and I was just... I, I had the position locked in mind. Dush is not actually a huge priority for us right now. Although energy is one of our biggest problems. I mean, if energy is one of our biggest problems, Gusher and all of the quicknesses are decent upgrades, and I'm keeping the quicknesses in the deck at the moment as a way to recover from the jab, but as we get more defensive cards, I'm happy to cycle them out. I just need to make sure my block is covered entirely from every direction. Berserker. Okay, we need to kill Berserker like very, 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 very quick. It has to die suddenly here. Um, okay. Do I leave Battle Cry in hand for a later turn? That they're all like planning attacking on? Ooh, they have a border that glows. Like, this is an attacking border. This is a defensive. Is that new? I like that. Um, I'm going to purge. I'm not playing the sidestep here because Fight Me Fair is the creature gains plus one frenzy for each zero cost blade. At the end of the turn, they'll reduce their frenzy to two and gain AP equal to the frenzy lost. So you really only want to be playing a bunch of zero cost when you have the plan already. Uh, sorry, you already have your plan, rather, to kill the enemy. Or if, of course, your zero costs are actually defending you, uh, which is going to be the case for us a lot of the time here. There we go. Got the bide. Big jab. I think I do want to go big jab now. Next to draw at the end as well. And apprentices, quickness, quickness. And we kill the berserker, preventing its damage. Great. That's exactly how I wanted to get that down. Uh, the berserker is not the resummon. It's either the rune priest or the runic pillar here. Okay. Didn't find a good natural defense on this turn, so I'm going to bide. Watch two cards, get a battle cry out there as well. I may leave this Apprentice Blade in hand just as a source of three temporary blades. Ah, we're hexed. Okay, the first card we play isn't going to do anything for us. Guess that should be the wimpy hidden blade there then. Get that jab out for all the draw it's worth. Then use Quickness and Apprentice Blade to try and get back to a reasonable state. We've got a lot more cards to play until that Torch of Triumph triggers, so I actually do want to naturally kill the Runic Pyramid this turn. Before resetting our focus elsewhere. Awesome. Awesome version of this fight. Definitely Gusha. Perfect. Come on, Black Voidstone. You can't come soon enough. 
I don't know if we're even going to be able to earn that before the end of the run. The jab quickness cycle actually feels like it's core to the deck. I'm upgrading one of the quicknesses. Oh, but Bide replaces that later. But no, it doesn't replace that later because then we're still super energy hungry. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> What's, what is our plan to gain energy with this deck? Where does that come from? Like an upgraded sidestep? I'm not getting that. I reiterate. What? Um, I'm going to battle cry. Purge down to Mithril. Play an extra card here. Okay. Sure. If they're all attacking again next turn, that... That was just a giant block card I played. Oh my god, they are all attacking this turn as well. Yay! Well, I mean, not yay, but yay. You know? Yay, no. Uh, yikes. Uh, this sucks. So here's the thing about this that sucks so much. I guess I'm going to have to use Jab to draw two cards right now. Yeah, because we had no Swift set up at all. Now we do, though, so everything's fine again. I think I do hold on to those hidden blades in here, though. Actually... If that was the kill, I wouldn't hold on to it. But it's not. Increase your frenzy by one of those attack. 15 incoming. There's another hidden blade in the deck as well as abide. We're fine. Thirteen incoming. Yeah, we just hit a bide and a mithril blades. We we'll play one card over on the left, getting the combo hit out. We've got an apprentice's blade to play next turn. And battle grind does look pretty juicy again, though. Wait a second, we actually collect that kill, purge one more card, keep our combo going. We've got two dueling bucklers left in the deck as well, so defense really ought not be difficult at all for us. This something extra needs to be cut. I re-put it in the deck, I think, in the Dollars fight, and I forgot about it. <laughs> it shouldn't it shouldn't still be in the deck at this point. We've we've been done for uh, done with it rather for a while. Um hmm. Yeah. So we just spent all of our combo in order to draw all of these cards, and then I'm going to gain all my combo back. Just immediately. I will play this something extra this turn to hold on to a dueling buckler. There's a dueling buckler in the draw. No. Prefer the energy. Not just the energy, but also the faster cycle, right? Get back to my other more important cards quickly. Love a free battle cry there. I could actually see myself holding this bide so I can play it after the jab. How much? Uh, one, two, three, four. There's four sources of combo left in the deck after that point. Okay, fine. I purge the bide then. Let's bring the map back up. Yeah, I don't. I don't think I can get the void stone in time. Fairly disappointed about that. But I'd prefer to be realistic. Okay. Good on the left, it's the horrific visions. Right, so what is your turn for the self-sacrifice? Is it literally just says the word sacrifice? 
is it literally just says the word sacrifice? Well done, Raps. I'm certain that was an attempt at a sentence. Those are all phonemes in the English language, but um, that's a unique order, Raps. Well done. Didn't say that much. You know, might as well just kill individual targets at this point. Alright, go. I would love to leave this fight with exactly the stacks that I have at the moment. Sad I do not get to. Actually, I probably should play the ability card there for the sake of the obsidian. One, two, three, attack. Trying to make sure I actually track those a little bit better at the end. Okay, we're about to get like real powerful real quickly. Oh my. That's a, that's a yellow void stone. When'd that happen? Ages ago? Second bind goes in the deck. There's nothing else here I desperately want. Um, yellow void stone, eh? I don't have a target for it right now. It's possible I get one in the future. This was the plan, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah that was the plan. That's good. Okay, disheveled gentlemen. You have... If the target has bleed at the start of your turn, draw a card. I like drawing cards. Uh, if the first card in your turn costs zero, draw a card. Oh my god, I would love to get both of those. I cannot, though. Gain one energy each time you expel a card. Each time you expel a card... That is pretty good, but is it for... That gives us the ability to set up the Miserable Blades to one extra and uh, one energy less. Oh my god, that's actually way better for us now. Thanks. Those Miserable Blades now need to be upgraded as best they can. What's... Map upgrade path. I'm... Yeah, I'm Kalinia with two attacks, uh, two upgrades here as well. We have the opportunity to upgrade each of them. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep, 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 yep. It'll be like having two permanent extra stacks of uh, combo. Which, considering that's the main stat by which we scale at the moment, seems like it might be a good idea. Uh... Two, three. All right, purge, play, then we get to play the bide. So that was literally just to get my combo back to its max, or rather up to its max on the very first turn here. Nice, because then we could just do things that benefit from it already being at its max. Such as... Eh, got him. Then use the apprentice's blade, and then... Purge the rest of the cards in hand, because I need to make sure that I do a couple purges in this fight. Lest the burning overwhelm me. Okay. Dueling buckler our way past sustenance. Get Mithril Blades out there, giving us an extra energy back. Got a level like that. Jab? Perfect. Let's use Gusha, gives us the energy back. Use the Mithril Blades there, gives us the energy back to play the Bide. Getting overcharged. Come on, drop that quickness and just attack a bunch as well. Our burning is now at 9 with vulnerability. It's 14 damage, but we should pretty much just be closing in on the kill right now. And we definitely are. Even with two combo. Love it. Get him. Get him. Got him. 
That Soul Collector, I've been collecting souls this entire time. You better give me something good. Suspicious Blade Oil seems nice. For every seven attack cards, play draw one. Mm -hmm. uh, whenever an enemy is brought below 50% HP, apply three weak and vulnerable to them. Love that too. Thorny Bramble, whenever you inflict bleed to a creature, it gains vulnerable one. I feel like we're overstacking the amount of vulnerable we need on the target at this point if we take this. Um, are we? Do they tend to always be vulnerable by that point? Not necessarily. Okay, so I have 47 to spend here, so that's 21 and 30, 51, if we wanted to take random artifact as well as that, as well as both of these. So um, I, I do have to, have to give up on one of them. I think I, I think with Execution Order, we don't need Thorny Bramble. So I'm going to go Execution Order, Suspicious Blade Oil, Random Artifact Users. At the start of your turn, one random creature will suffer two bleed. All right, fine. Um, and then I'm going to go for the Strength Potion for the final fight. Beast of Malice. Dealing damage to this creature increases its serious, serious damage output. I love that jab right there. I'm actually probably just going to pop that into the deck, no questions. Each time you cast your spell, apply to no. Uh, after each combat, you'll always find a potion. It's way too late to really get that much value out of that, unfortunately. And then put, uh, the Watcher, every fifth card you also purge will block two. Don't love that either. I'm going to take the Barbed Wand. <laughs> uh, best option, it appeared to me. Ideally, I do not want to attack for a while. Mm, drop a quickness. Play the defend. Pass the turn. I, I want to wait until I have all of my powers played, basically, until I start actually hitting her. Well, before, rather, I start actually hitting her. So I can use that parry for a bunch of draw right now and try and set up the Mithril Blades this turn. The faster I set up, the better off I'll be. Okay. Combo, combo. Then I... I mean, these are... They're temporary, right? Oh, they're not volatile, though, so they would shuffle back into the draw pile, so I actually do need to play some of them. Sorry. If it hits 25, his frenzy will be increased by one. I mean, we've already hit 25, so screw it. Keep going. It's not like it's for every stage of 25 it's increased. It's a good battle cry. The, the rigged on this battle cry is actually, it's like, this is low key being huge this entire run. Like, obviously, like everything else that I'm doing at the moment is a lot more flashy, but that is really pulling us along. It performs. Great. We almost invariably have a kill this turn, I believe. Gosh, Adam. Got him. There's our jab. I really want that in the deck. Is it? Is it wrong? Did I? Is this a bad choice? One of my final two upgrades. They're both mithril blades. They're both mithril blades. I think we're fine. They can limit our rage. They have the ability to haunt us. None of that really matters to us. God, I wish I really wish that I just had a single Black Void Stone over the course of this run. Although I always wish that. I love the Black Void Stones. Um, okay, so it's... 
Can I actually play enough to get to the eighth ability this turn? One, two, three, four, five. I could actually. Well, especially if I wanted to use jab, right? Actually, I should use jab. Oh god, so we go off on turn one. Hang on, let's set up for that then. It's quickness. Apprentice blade. Quickness. Throw a parry. Use the jab for the draw. Do that as the start action. Unless I want to use a hidden blade first. No, because then the jab gets the extra draw for the sake of being played an additional time for the band of power. Jab in hand as well as a quickness. Unfortunately, we didn't get any binds in this hand. It's a little unfortunate. Feels like everyone's going to be attacking next turn, so I should probably play a battle cry. So I'm going to play a dueling buckler. Hey, we got a bide. Never mind. We're playing bide for the extra energy that we got there. Let's get rid of these two giving me access to quicken play that and then i'll just play all of the attacks i'm gonna leave bide in the next hand yeah because only one enemy is attacking this turn for eight right so if they all attack for the next two turns then this battle cry just became more valuable by holding on to it Purge the From Shadow and play Gusher. Feeling that was all pretty well set up. Okay, we should be able to kill easily from here. Whew. This fight can often be quite a hassle, so I'm very, very glad to have kind of an easier time with it here. I love a jab in this hand. Got to be good. Just go the absolute heck off. We only have five incoming damage next turn. Hard purge the hand and then go for the kills. Sure. Welp. Not really how I expected this one to go. Oh, see. Dueling Buckler past the card and then... Oh my god. Big jab and then the bide and quickness immediately gets us back up. Did not need to play that quickness because I'm about to play an apprentice's blade. Right. Two... Purge. Three. Kill. Smithrow Blades number one. This merchant has... Interesting. Tower shields? Single large block? I think it's actually none of these. I don't think they contribute anything to us at all. Thief's Code. At the start of each turn, discard one card, draw another. Upgrades have become rigged. I mean, that's never bad, is the thing. Just helps you curate your hand a little better. I'm going to take it. Whether or not I play it is going to be another it. Well, actually, no. We have Sustenance, and that's an easy cut from the deck. Sure, get in there. Get in there. Get stuck into it, eh? <laughs> we can't get away a single episode without having a fight, y'all. All right, Pyamites in the pile. I really hope I'm well prepared. Could have used an explosive potion if I really wanted there, but I got a flex on him, you know? Okay. Start with getting rid of a couple obvious ones here. weakened as well. Get another quickness out. And now it's just time to play a bunch of cards. Ooh, 
Ooh, and the buyer in the middle was the one that was uh, made worse there. Love it. Also, Scorch is happening on the far right instead of the far left, so we're actually not taking 32 damage this turn. Instead, we're just taking eight. You best believe I'm going to leave that one in hand for the next turn. It's possible we end up jabbing before we even play it. In fact, I would say that's quite likely. Let's bind into quickness. Thief's code is super easy to play there. Purge another quickness because we don't need that. I really want to purge more cards here. Just keep decreasing the value of these enemies. Could I just hard purge this hand? Yes. It's not a huge problem for us to do so. Start with Mithril Blades. Right? Yes. Play Jab. Roll of the draw. We're not going to get to the Obsidian Crown trigger yet, so... One, two, three... Ooh. Four... Wait a second. It's going to work, isn't it? Wait. Let's purge Bayard, play the Quickness, play Battle Cry thereafter. And then it's just time to kill. All right, am I missing something obvious here? Actually, 34 incoming is, ex well, the other than the burning is on the Pyamite over here, so. Let's prevent that from being a target. Three incoming next turn. Gotcha, you Pyamites. Oh, you thought you could get away from me, huh? There's our next upgrade point. As much as I really want to be on those quicknesses right now. We're going to need more scaling for the final fight. And that'll help boiled blood. Suffer Burning 4, gain Rage 75%. Also suffers, uh, or rather the enemy suffers too vulnerable. This is a lot of extra damage. This is like almost double damage on the turns that we do that kind of like blow up, right? I'm taking it. I'm also going to opt into it. The birth pit. These fetid abominations gurgle pus-infused blood from a vague mouth hole as globules of rancid flesh shake free. Their stench alone will defeat most. The boss gets gradually buffed when uh, targeted by attacks, so knowing when to back off and when to focus on her gradually growing minions is key. At the same time, I could just go in with an explosive bottle. Okay, uh, in time I grow. Each time you draw a card, take this value up by one. When it reaches 10, the creature gains one AP. There's also need uh, the need to survive. Each attack card played against this creature will increase its value, uh, frenzy by one, reset its frenzy to one after attacking. So only when I know that I've got like a huge block the next turn do I really want to go, you know? Uh, I mean, Battle Cry is an obvious play this turn. I think it's Battle Cry Quickness and then like hard purge the hands. Do I want to keep that dueling buckler, maybe? So much of the defense, uh, so much of the deck is defensive at the moment. I don't need to. Okay, so killing each of the pinkies is just ten percent from the end of it. Then 
hard purge one more time. Okay. We've got all of our combos set up. We've got two of our pars set up. We've only got one more. There we go. There it is. Let's get the jab and the bind in this hand. Okay, so we're going. One. Yeah? Yeah, 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 here we go. The thing is, like, they're both going to get way more powerful right now because I'm about to draw infinite cards. So I have to target them. Okay. Then... Purge. One, two. Okay, quickness. Battle cry, play bide. Back up to full energy. Do I want to use the jab now? Yep. Target down. I'm gonna hard perch that whole hand. That birth pit's not getting stronger this entire time, right? What's its feed? Increases the AP of pinkies by one. Yeah. So since the birth bit isn't getting larger this entire time, uh, as long as I have the ability to take down the chumps, I should just focus on doing that, I think. Just kind of scarred. Um, Bide's not needed this turn. Well, B. Immediately draw a jab after I say Bide isn't needed this turn. And it was needed this turn as well. Our combo was low. So... At every conceivable phase of what I just said, I was wrong. Every single one. Oh, you gotta love that. Uh, okay. That's just a free block for us. Getting past a card. Gusha. And then quickness making bide cost zero. So now I have the ability to combo off the rest of my cards. Perfect. On the turn, uh, oh wait, hang on. Uh, always, no wait, it's always resets its frenzy to one after attacking. But if I keep it slow constantly, hmm, 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 hmm. I do need to eventually attack it though, is the thing. So I do need to have a plan how and when that's going to start happening. Yeah. He comes out swinging with three frenzy here. Just got this card. Um, got to duck and weave if I really want to just go off, right? There's no way it's lethal this turn, is there? There's a lot of stuff in there. Actually, you know what? I'm going to try it. So we start with this hidden blade. We don't play dueling buckler. We now play jab. Okay, uh... Now play... Double Quickness. Dueling Buckler. Second Dueling Buckler. Drop that sidestep. Purge Battle Cry for Jab. Play Bide to get our stats back up. Jab again. Again, jab for the kill. New spells retaliate. Okay, good. I'm 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 glad that we had kind of like a, a vague ballpark of like, okay, this is this is how much we can go. Also, these uh, two quicknesses now need to be upgraded. They make that whole cycle so much easier because I have to purge a card to play them at the moment. Uh, every time you purge a card, block three. No overcharge. Actually, yeah, increase your max energy by one. Start each turn with overcharge. That's an extra energy every single turn, and that actually matters a lot to us. 
The first two cards played will trigger plus one times. The problem that we have with that right now is that the Mithril Blades are not the first two cards we play almost ever, right? They would have to just luckily be in the opening hand. Just kidding. Um, first card played each turn costs two less. That's also another way of addressing our energy concerns. In fact, I think we only need one of these two to address our energy concerns. Look at the deck at the moment. Yeah, I think we're fine. All right, Puppet Master. Let's see what you can do. Hmm. Do I really want to go for the draw on turn one? I pull the strings. Start of the fight, shovel eight banes into your discard pile. Your friends is equal to one plus the banes that I currently have in hand. So I actually don't even want to dig into the deck if I can avoid it. There we go. Yeah, ideally I don't want to get into my discard as quickly as possible, so I don't want to just cycle draw. I want as much time spent out here in safety as possible. Gusha should have been played first. It's entirely my bad. I should, should have played the sidestep at the very end as well. Oof, Ryan. He's going to cost us. They really will. Not at the moment, but they will. Okay. Push those too easily. 40 damage two times, and those 40 damages also defended us. Banes are in the discard pile. Maybe I want one hand full of a bunch of Banes. Exit stage right. Hang on. We'll expel the top card of the deck and replace it with two Banes. It's Frenzy is equal to one plus the number of Banes currently in your hand. Okay, so actually we want hard draw this turn. We want to go off. Uh, I guess I dropped that Bane. There's no reason to keep that in hand regardless still. Um, we're also going to be using the, the Burning Blood this turn, definitely. Okay. There's our hard defend. Draw card. Cool. Jab for all the draw that I need. Oh my god, get all the combo that I need in order to jab again. Nice. Uh, then... Bide, and I could hard purge these two and then throw out a battle. Oh, sorry, a uh, battle cry, that is. Um, the energy cost of my deck is quite low at the moment. Sure, let's do it. It's fine. Got rid of a gusher and gave me a bane. <coughs> sorry. That, uh, that sound was me being terrified. Uh, let's get rid of that bane from the draw pile. And then I leave that dueling buckler in hand for the block next turn. I'm too scared. That is too scared not to. Good dueling buckler. Doesn't get us everything we need, but it gets us close enough to go find the rest of it ourselves. Okay. With any reasonable draw, we'll kill. One. I'm gonna play a dueling buckler. Nice. So now my first skill in the next combat, it's sorry, first ability in the next combat is gonna be zero cost. Plus two cards play Dream Trust plus one times. Is there ever like is extra energy bad for me in any way? Just going extra energy on extra energy, right? Trying to cycle through the draws with the jabs constantly. Ha! 
Hang on. Wait a second here. Hello, Black Voidstone. Welcome to the deck. Um... I'll be honest, I wasn't expecting you. <laughs> uh, there are... Oh, God. Where do I even put you at this point? Like, I wanted to put you into Gusher. But... In Dueling Buckler, you're just double the defense for a single card. In Quickness, you're two combo. That's nothing to turn your nose up at, especially while we're using the, the jab draws. I don't think we're putting you in Mithril Blades anymore, though. I think after the upgrade, that became a lot harder for us to do, because it's four energy investment rather than two energy investment. Or rather, six rather than four, but I'm decreasing them by the, the Enchanted Water Bottle. The Enchanted Water Bottle is so good. Wow, I think maybe I wait over the course of this fight to try and figure out which it is. There's no way it's something extras right in the final deck, is there? Actually, that's not bad, right? Because they expel. I could easily put two something extras instead of like a like a parry and a duck and weave. Two of the weakest cards in that. Actually, it'd be from Shadow and Duck and Weave, probably. That'd give us some scaling damage in that fight, because we kind of need some scaling damage in that fight. After all of the begging I've been doing, I'm still going to hold on to that Black Void Stone for a turn, I think, here. First two cards will trigger plus one times. I'm doing that. Never mind. They have the ability to go immune after being the target of a number of attack cards. I forgot about that. Okay, we'll be going to the Vecini in Golem instead. Uh, resistant to gradual damage, that's fine. I don't really do gradual damage, I suddenly kill enemies. Okay. Let's abide, quickness, battle cry. Those always happen, so I'm not really going to be negotiating those. We'll try and get the left arm down first. Decrease the amount of incoming damage. Nice. Good uh, good removal of that hex there with the quickness. Some of these hexes are actually going to be really bad for us. Maybe I should have gone for the right arm first. I'm a touch worried. Let's try the Gusher. Throw blades, and then I'm gonna start killing, right? Sorry, start cycling with the jabs, I mean. Purge those three, get an apprentice's blade out for a little bit more jabbing. We can everyone. There's so much combo gain left in that deck. I'm actually just gonna use this jab first. There we go. Left arm down. This is going to be our first uh, impossible victory on camera as well. I, well. I'm getting ahead of myself here. It might be our first impossible victory on camera as well. So, yeah. If that happens, I mean. Which it might. Let's ride the battle cry as well and purge. Just keep them real weak. Hmm. 
Definitely happy to remove the duck and weave there. Uh, we're only hexed for one. Okay, cool. We'll start out the buckler. That was that was a hex as well as haunted. Sorry. Then we'll use this buckler. All right, cool. Uh, and then jab him. Nice. Let's get one combo as well as a bunch more blades. Bite is two combo gain. It's just currently in the deck. Let's draw that. Perfect. Not maybe the largest amount of damage ever dealt in a single turn, but we haven't got any vulnerability on the target yet. We're going to have to wait for a, a boiling blood turn, I think, if we want to do that. And in fact, I think this would be that turn. All right, let's kill the left hand first, I guess. Right arm, sorry. Yeah, that vulnerability makes a difference. I'm happy holding two burning. I generate enough lock that it's not really a concern for us. Nice jab. Uh, let's discard the battle cry because I think we're like very far past the use my date of those. Jab over on the left. We hit a... Quickness, quickness, dueling buckler drops a hidden blade even there, I think. Because then we can apprentice's blade into another jab for a bunch of draw. Bide, purge two. Do I want to hold on to that bide? Nope, I'm going to play and just get back into full. I shouldn't have played it. 24 damage I have to block with this, sir. I shouldn't have played it. That's bad. Uh, it's not going to cost us anything, but I still don't think I should have done it. Three out of three. Okay. Good block. I'm also going to hold on to this dueling buckler just in case. I'm also not going to use the boiled blood to try and round out this fight because we immediately go into the void after this. It's possible I want to use it on the first turn against the void. Very unlikely, I'll say. Possible. Probably not going to happen, but theoretically possible. All right. We should have enough tools in this deck to draw lethal this turn. Yeah, that'll do it. Finish it with the jab, just in true style there. That black void stone needs to go into... I really want to put it in Mithril Blades. Well, let's do the thing we already said, right? Two something extras. We cut a parry and the... From Shadow. Actually, Duck and Weave I'll leave in there, I think. Obviously, draw a potion into uh, three strength potions. I mean, two Thieves Codes is not bad either. Actually? Not only is it not bad, it's exactly what we want. Look, I'll throw this into a Dueling Buckler, but it's not... Not really what we need. Let's go into the fight. There's no way I would really be changing my abilities here, I don't think. Okay. Get both of those out. Use a quickness to play Battle Cry for free. Use another quickness. Granting us the ability to play this jab for a bunch of draw. Use a quickness. Then purge a hidden blade as well as a bide in order to play another bide. 
Going down with one more card at the end of the turn. Four incoming damage next turn. But we've set up two of our powers, as well as two overcharge, as well as all of our combo. Nothing to turn our nose up at. There's another Mithril Blades, something extra, Thieves Code, Thieves Code. Gotta love it. Like, we just got four energy out of the, the uh, Enchanted Water Bottle this turn. Like, that is giant. Two dueling bucklers at the very bottom of the deck. Yeah, that makes sense. I think I'm going to start hero powering as of next turn. Because now the enemy's only vulnerable if I do hero power. Battlecry would be a good start at this turn, actually. Wait, no, the enemy's using Fury. Yeah, so they won't. In fact, Battlecry does nothing for us this turn. We'll discard it. Which is another cost Um, We don't need both of the bucklers. Definitely start out with hero power. Go for the blade. <laughs> that should not have been my first play. Oops. Probably should have played the uh, Francis' blade first. Save some actual energy there. Let's draw out the whole deck. Then I play the quickness in order to lower the cost of the bide using the, the obsidian ground. I've been doing that consistently, like charging up with all zero costs in order to play a high three cost. Um, it's been working very, 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 very well also. So hit those two out there and then follow up with another jab. Great. Don't have another jab in hand at this point, but that's okay. That gusher with the amount of max energy that we can have. Seems like it could get good. Two, three. Purge those two, getting another Apprentice's Blade. I think I'm going to leave Gusha for the future, actually. Enemy's still not attacking this turn, so the Battle Grace still did. Wait, actually. It would uh, would guarantee some weak for the next turn. Actually, I may actually just want to hold on it. Actually, 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 apparently the word of the day. Um, yeah, I probably want to hold that battle cry. Probably two hours and 20 seconds in. Two hours and two minutes and 42. Okay, cool. Fair, 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 fair. Uh, we drop. Dueling buckler? Dueling buckler, we really don't need those. I'm gonna just go for a... No, no. Gusher is for a turn where I can boil blood. Should have discarded Gusher, I think. Alright, jab. Get him. One, two, three. Bides now zero cost. Jab, jab. I mean, not jab, but jab, you know? Uh, what is a combo right now is three. Okay, it's battle cry we drop. We're going for the kill this turn, I think. And hidden blade. We're very, very happy to go straight for lethal this turn. Because it'll look a lot like that. GG. Achievement unlocked retirement. Defeat the Void on impossible difficulty. Hey, so not only is this my first on-camera victory against the, vo uh, the Void in impossible, but it's also my first victory against the Void in impossible. That was... More possible than I thought it was going to be. I'm going to master something extra. I mean, look, it contributed a little bit there. But I feel a little bit less intimidated going into the next characters. Obviously, that was a very, very, very strong deck. But we had the time in the beginning as we were kind of figuring out what the deck was to live 
right? They didn't uh, didn't just suddenly cark it on floor three because I didn't decide to take, you know, the first attack card and put that into my deck or some such, um, which I can encounter in some scenarios in, in some games. For the moment, though, let me just say that my name is Winner Absinthe. The name of the game has been Vaults of the Void. There's a playlist in the description down below with all my content on the game past, present, and future. And again, the Steam store page is down there where you can go wishlist that the game is going to be coming out into early access on Steam, should there not be any hitches encountered, I believe, uh, on the 20th of this month. Hopefully you've been enjoying yourselves, and hopefully we'll see you next time.